What do we have here? Two giant packages. Oh snap, it's a supercharger. Yee-hee! What's up guys, hello and welcome to a very special episode on the channel. As you can see, I've gone ahead, done something very silly, and I've bought a supercharger that we are gonna be putting on our beautiful T18 Corolla. We're gonna be mounting it right here to the side of our M50 B20 BMW engine. Uh, obviously we had fuel issues at the track day when we took this out and mostly because we have the most rusty tank that you will have ever seen in your entire life. I'll show you guys kind of what we're dealing with. Look at what's dripping out of the bottom of this tank if it will ever focus. It's literally creating some type of life form and it's uh, super gunky. So my good friend Jared is here. He's helping us out. Hi Jared. His last name is Gooch, which is really awesome. And he's bought the new fuel tank for us. Not new, it's old, but it's not rusty like the one that we have. So first things first, before we even start supercharging this beautiful car, we're gonna pull this fuel tank out. And we're gonna put a new one in, and that's gonna fix all of our problems. And we've also got a new fuel rail and some new injectors. But obviously what you guys are here to see is the supercharger. So. Here's a quick rundown on the setup. It's very basic setup, right? So a friend of mine reached out to me and said, hey, I've got these brackets to bolt a supercharger up to an M50 engine sitting around. Would you like them? And I said, yes, and he said, sweet. And he sent them to me, and that's these brackets here. And I believe they are the Hyde Motorsport brackets that someone has laser cut out, which is freaking awesome. And so I went out and bought a SC14 supercharger that these are made for. So I paid 100 bucks for the brackets. $350 for the supercharger. We're gonna bolt it up to this engine today, which I'm freaking pumped about. So, the reason obviously I decided to go supercharger, uh, a couple of reasons, it's super simple. There's no oil, send, or return lines. Um, literally bolt the supercharger up, put the belt on, run the piping to the inlet manifold, no intercooler, no nothing, and it's done, we've got boost. We're not gonna be putting an aftermarket ECU in this thing, we're gonna run the stock ECU, uh, we're going to put M52 B28 injectors in it, so slightly bigger. It will still idle fine, it'll just be a little bit rich on idle. And fuel pressure regulator in this, so a rising rate fuel pressure reg, so that when it comes on boost, it'll push more fuel into the engine, thus giving us a safe boost, hopefully. We are going to be putting this thing on a dyno, and we will see how much power it's making and make sure that the AFRs are safe, which will be awesome. So what I want to do right now is I want you guys to jump into the comment section and let me know how much power that you think this M50 B20 is going to make. Uh, we'll be running about 7 PSI of boost, and the winner, I will send out uh, a t-shirt and some other random cool stuff. Uh, put your votes in now in the comment section, but yeah, very exciting day. In terms of the belt size, we are not running power steering on our Corolla. We have a shorter belt on it at the moment, which I pulled off, which is here. Um, and I have a stock belt here, which is made for power steering. Now, because we're not running the power steering, we should have hopefully enough length on this belt that it'll reach the supercharger. If not, we may have to go out and get another belt from Super Cheap. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, super exciting day. Very pumped. Jared's doing all the hard work back there and I'm just talking to a camera. But yeah, first things first, we're gonna drain the tank, pull it out, put the new one in, put the new injectors and stuff in, get it running nicely, naturally aspirated, and then we'll bolt the supercharger up. Mm. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I can't wait to hear it make whiny noises. It's gonna be the weirdest. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's very aggressive though. It is very aggressive. Like? You hold the tailgate up. Oh. You could spank someone with Lucky. that. How hard is it to pull the fuel tank out? Uh, pretty easy, I reckon about 20 minutes. Oh, yep. So, oh, is it these straps here? Those straps, a um, couple of hoses up under there, and three more up under the front. Oh yeah, sweet. I hate this stuff. We have to drain it first. Let's drain it now. That's insane. Solid horsepower. That we've lost. Yeah. Yeah. This thing did not run well <laughs> at the track. And we know why. Look at the colour of it. Wow. So ridiculous. Yeah, so that's... That's why we weren't making any power. Alrighty, time for this rusty thing to come out, I think. Boom! That was quick though, you did well. Cheers. Done it before. 
times. Jared owns K70s and stuff, so he has knowledge. I have zero knowledge. Here's the sender unit that was pulled out from the old tank. Oh, she rusty. Chop that off, we're literally just gonna use this, the lid of it, as a uh, block for the hole on the other tank. We don't need a fuel sender. All right, so while Jared's fitting up the fuel tank that we've just put in, yeah, yeah, no more rust. Let's have a look at the supercharger setup. So, I've started kind of fitting the brackets up to see how it's all gonna fit. This is pretty much how it looks, right? So we have the top bracket coming up over here. Then we've got the giant bracket here, okay? That bolts up down where power, the power steering would be. You can still run power steering with all this stuff. It's made to work with it, but we're not running power steering, so that makes it a little bit easier. And then the supercharger, which is sitting here, bolts here and here. And that's literally as simple as it is to bolt it up. Then we chuck all of the uh, stuff back on, the pulley and stuff. And then we have to run a charge pipe, which goes down here, up to the throttle body. That's it. And then of course, this stuff here now runs off here, which is the intake on the supercharger. This is a uh, magnetic pulley, which means that you can have it on a switch and turn the supercharger on or off whenever you want it, which is absolutely awesome. And you can also hook the supercharger up to um, the TPS so that you can have the supercharger come on at a certain amount of throttle, which is another very cool feature, but I think we're just gonna run it on all the time because we want to keep it as simple as possible. Usually these kits would come with um, spaces as well because depending on what variant of motor you have, things change a little bit here and there. So obviously like I'm using a wheel nut in here to kind of sort out the spacings and stuff um, to get it right because at the moment it's still slightly touching the alternator but once it's all sitting properly, that won't be touching. Yeah, but very, very simple, but awesome setup. And that's exactly why I bought it, because it's very straightforward. I shouldn't be spending much more time on this car because we need to get the E36 ready for competition, but uh, I couldn't help myself. I always want to entertain you guys as much as possible. I feel like a supercharger just adds more fun to the, uh, the car. Yeah. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? So I'm thinking, by the way, when we do kind of move this car on, I might do a raffle where there's like 200 tickets and each ticket is $50. So you have a one in 200 chance of winning this thing. And then we will send it to you wherever you are in Australia. So let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Looks like the tank's pretty much in. Watching Luke Fink live at D1NZ here. Yeah. Cool, so the supercharger, I've realized kind of we have to cut some of this rad support here, which there's not much left of it anyway, let's be honest. Um, we'll probably have to move the bonnet pins, which is fine. They can go further out to the side and put another hole in the bonnet. Not an issue at all um, to fit it up. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cut this out to see if we can chuck a bolt through the supercharger and have it sitting in the place, kind of mocked up where it'll sit. And then we'll see whether the belt will work, whether it won't, whether we need to get a longer belt or not. So it's all just kind of test fitting and trial and error at the moment. Alrighty, so I made the cut. I've just mocked up the supercharger really quickly on the brackets and just to see if our belt would work. Obviously the supercharger is just sitting here at the moment, but this is kind of the scenario that we're looking at. I just realized, yeah, we're not running the idler pulley, but I think the stock belt, so that's the belt that we have that deletes power steering, right? This is the stock belt. I think the stock belt will work in this place with the idler pulley here and the length will go a little bit more, but this is pretty much the deal. This is how it's gonna look. Obviously the intake we can't have pointing up because the bonnet, so we're going to have to work out a different way for the intake to run. Might have to make a little plate, a different intake, and have it kind of running down here with the pod filter, but damn, this thing is going to be so freaking epic, supercharged. Right now we'll take the belt off quickly, we're going to start the car up NA because we do have the new fuel tank in. We'll just run some fuel through the lines just to make sure they're all clear, and then uh, we can kind of start her up. Boom! It's pizza time, we're refueling. Watching some D1NZ as well. Don't know if you can see that. Super stoked. Let's go Luke Fink. Alrighty, so we've had our food. Feeling good. Uh, now we're gonna swap out the fuel rail and injectors because these are the clogged ones with all the rust in them. And then we're gonna start the car up NA. And then we have to make uh, one more bracket down below just so the supercharger sits up where it needs to be. Shave a little bit off these brackets. Put the belt on and then we can start the car officially for the first time with the supercharger on it which is super exciting. This has been a really basic install, which is exactly what I was aiming for, because I don't have time to be doing turbos and, and oil drains and oil feeds and exhaust and anything like that. But with Supercharger, you don't have to modify the exhaust. Leave it. 
We don't touch that side of the engine at all. It's all just literally installing a supercharger, which is mad. Jared already went ahead. We actually managed to modify this intake top hat just by cutting little slots in the bolt holes because it is actually a symmetrical flange, just the bolt holes aren't symmetrical. So um, yeah, now it's going downwards and we're gonna go 90 degree pop filter will set up here in the exact same spot that it's already sitting. And then we obviously need to make an intake pipe so it goes to the throttle body. And that's basically the install done. Other than of course, fuel pressure regulator stuff and a little bit of tuning and bigger injectors, but supercharger wise, very, very simple. Alrighty, so as you just saw, we ran the fuel pump to get the fuel lines clear because there was still heaps of crap in them. Now it's clear, which is so nice. We've got the new injectors in. We're gonna start the engine NA right now, and then we'll go ahead and work towards starting it supercharged, which is very close. Look at that dodgy setup over here of battery because the supercharge is in the way. So we're gonna relocate the battery, of course, to this side because there's so much room right here. Making progress. Can't wait to hear this thing whine. It's gonna be awesome. Cool, so as you can see it runs sweet NA which is awesome to know. Uh, so we're going to continue on with the build uh, and get the supercharger running. A couple of wee things we need to do. Just need to take a little bit off in a couple of places on these brackets and make it, obviously make a wee bracket so that the supercharger sits in the, the right spot and then this belt that we have will work for us which is fantastic. Alrighty, so we've got a little spacer that we've made for this section down here. This goes in behind the plate to, to make sure that this plate here is in the exact spot that we need it. So I'll go ahead and chuck the spacer in and then that's the bottom done. And we've grinded off what we need to on this plate here so this fits nicely and now we can put the idler pulley on which is rad. So that's almost everything we need to do and then we can fit the supercharger properly and then we need to make this one last bracket. Slowly coming together. I was supposed to film the supercharger going on, but I did not film it because I thought I pressed film and I didn't. But the supercharger is now on. We're gonna put the belt on and kind of see how we go. How exciting. Alright guys, it's the moment of truth. The supercharger is all installed, obviously it's super messy. But we're gonna start the car for the first time, but first we have to put the battery on, of course. Alright, we decided to put the radiator into the car so that we can actually run it properly. So we're gonna fill it up with water. She's thirsty, man. Two. Ready? Yep. Uh, apply the negative to the Supercharged T18 in a day, by the way. This morning it was NA and not even running properly with a crappy rusty tank. This afternoon, supercharged, new tank, running perfectly. You can't ask for more than that. Dude, pumped. That's sick. Now we have to actually get the burst into the engine, which is another thing altogether, isn't it? Mmm, that's gonna be hard. Nice. So this is the fuel that was in the tank, the bottom of the tank that we pulled out. Look at that. That is insane. Wow, it's like digging for gold, but 
it's not gold, it's just the worst. Mm. <laughs> that is crazy. Well, there you have it, guys. The T18 is officially supercharged and running with a supercharger on it, which is absolutely freaking awesome. It was pretty basic, really. It took about a day just to muck around and do a couple of things. Obviously, we've still got a bunch of wee things to do. We'll be putting the M52 B28 injectors in, a rising rate fuel pressure regulator. And of course, we need to hook up the actual charge pipe that goes from the supercharger into our throttle body. And then of course, the airflow meter will be going directly into the intake of the supercharger. Very basic setup. Um, but other than that, the hard part really has been done. Just pumped, it makes some very cool noises as well. Uh, the car's running great, so. All right guys, it's another day supercharging the T18, carrying on. I actually ended the video yesterday, did an outro and everything, but then I decided that I kind of owe it to you guys to take this thing for a test drive. So I'm filming on my phone at the moment because uh, my camera is charging and I needed to go down to Super Cheap. We just bought a bunch of uh, goodies that we need to kind of finish the supercharger setup. So uh, got a, a battery lead so that we can shift the battery to the other side of the engine bay. And I got a, a bunch of silicon joiners so that we can uh, so that we can route the charge pipe to the throttle body so we can actually get the boost into the car and then just a couple of other wee things some new fuel hose just because i'm going to rerun the fuel lines because i wasn't happy with the way that they were at the track and uh yeah so a couple of wee things and we're going to take this thing for a drive today it'll be a pretty chill drive because uh i haven't got the bigger injectors in it yet it'll be a drive nonetheless i should be working on the e36 but hey sometimes we just have to allow ourselves to get a little bit distracted but yeah get excited guys we're going to be taking the t18 for a drive it's freaking rad yeah. Alrighty, so we're back here with the T18, the supercharger setup as we left it yesterday. Um, I've gone ahead and bought a couple of 90 degree bends, silicon bends. We're also relocating the battery to the other side of the engine bay, like I said. So I've got a nice long battery cable so that we can connect that up, get that out of the way, have that safely over this side so that we have as much room as possible over this side. Um, and now we need to go ahead and figure out kind of how we're going to run so the outlet of the supercharger is right here okay and we have to get that to here which is going to be kind of a little bit complicated but hopefully not too complicated um, so we're going to take the silicon uh, joiner off the supercharger here uh, I think that means I need to remove the supercharger quickly and we're going to put this kind of bend on which will bring hopefully outlet out somewhere around here and then we're going to do like a 90 straight into the uh, throttle body so might not be as simple as I just said but we'll see how it goes this has gone from zero to a hundred real quickly but uh, I'm pretty stoked pretty stoked on how it all looks eh? just looks good I think we're gonna have to cut a nice hole in the bonnet here because this is sitting quite high I'm fine with that we cool we cool with that The awesome thing about this setup is it takes like 10 minutes not even to pull the supercharger off uh, which is pretty awesome so we've got the supercharger off now I'll go ahead and switch this joiner over for a 90 degree bend and then we can chuck it all back together at some point I'm gonna spray the supercharger black spray this like a really nice silver and stuff make it all look good but for now obviously it's about getting the thing running first and making sure it's mint before we go ahead and uh, do the rest you Dan's rocked up to help us out. Hey Dan. Hey. He's laughing at me. And we've figured out, so obviously the supercharger setup is back on now. Dan's nice wee filming skills in that little montage. Uh, so supercharger's back on. And now this is how we're gonna run our uh, charge pipe. So obviously we've got the 90 coming down now off the supercharger. And we've got a 90 coming off the throttle body. And then we have another 90, which is here that goes right here and then obviously we've got metal piping uh, joining all of it up and that's just literally as simple as it is no intercooler no nothing um, so we're gonna chop this pipe right here up to, to work with our 
charge pipe and then I just need to chop this 90 which is the intake coming off the supercharger about here and then we can fit up the airflow meter with the pod filter, plug it in and that's the supercharger set up complete. Is that exciting or what? Yes. And we'll do a couple other little things and then we're going to take it for a drive. We can't really give it too much boost because it's got stock injectors at the moment. Massive shout out to Tara for the uh, beautiful iced coffees. Did you have one? I did not. So that's why he's a rookie. Man that's yum. Jesus. supercharger setup is officially ready to go so we've got the intake side on and we've got our charge pipe all ready so there's nothing more left to do but uh, start the car do you want to start the car Dan? Dan's filming random stuff on my phone right fingers crossed that this works That is insane. All right guys, so the car is ready for its first drive and it's kind of funny because I guess some of you hopefully will have seen the first ever video that we did on this channel was supercharging uh, a BMW motor almost with the same style of setup with Daniel, which is mad. If you guys haven't seen that video, hit the link, <coughs> check it out. It's quite hilarious, very Mighty Car Mods yes. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Dan. And welcome to the first ever episode, Supercharging our M40 B18 E36 BMW. And now we've kind of done a full circle and we're back to the same spot. So I don't know whether... Yes, I don't know whether uh, that means that we haven't made much progress <laughs> in our lives. But I'm super excited to take this for a drive. Obviously there's lots of carding up to do, but we can't wait. So let's do it. King? Go for a drive. Ew. Woo! Some cuts on, windows. <laughs> So we had an intercooler pipe pop off, well not an intercooler pipe, we had the charge pipe pop off one of the silicon joiners in the first run so I've secured that back on, hopefully it stays on this time and did a bit tighter. Uh, Dan had to go home so it's just me but uh, take two of the drive. Felt good first time.
that's it. First drive of the supercharged M50 B20 Corolla T18 T70, whatever you want to call that Toyota. Super stoked. Um, as you guys saw, we were popping the hoses off the charge pipe. That is because I just realized we're not running a bypass valve, which you need to run. It's basically a blow off valve, but it recirculates the air back into the intake. And that's because as soon as you, so you rev it, it creates boost and that's fine. But as soon as you close the throttle, the boost gets trapped in here, has nowhere to go, it builds up. And that's why it's popping the hoses off. So the valve goes on the charge pipe. And as soon as you let off the throttle, it releases that pressure back into the intake. Thus, no more popping intercooler pipes. So I have to order one of those off eBay. They're about 30 bucks. I'll do that right now uh, before we hit the dyno. But I did feel the boost and the car runs perfectly now that we've put the new tank in as well. So everything's great. I just need to put the M52 B28 injectors in, the pink ones, just to give us a little bit more fuel. Fuel pressure regulator in, tidy things up a little bit and then it's going to be ready for the dyno and then the track which is awesome so freaking stoked uh, let me know what you guys think about the setup in the comments below I think it looks freaking awesome super happy with the whole thing so uh, we're going to be taking this drifting very soon but first obviously we've got competition on the 14th of March in the E36 so I need to knuckle down and finish that off put the gearbox in, finish the wrap double check everything on the car get it aligned, get it dyno tuned and the competition is in two weeks, so uh, but uh, also let me know what you guys think in terms of how much power you think this will make on the dyno. As it sits, I don't have a boost gauge in it, so I don't know how much boost it's making, uh, but I think about 7 psi, so your guesses should be based on about 7 pound of boost in this thing. Stoked. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Instagram, at it's Mike Lake. Send me a message if you guys have any questions. I love to chat. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, peace.